I just wanted to say thank you for the input on yesterday's video. Of course, I'd love the channel to keep growing, but I wanna make sure that I listen to the community that's here and do my best to ensure those of you that have been here rocking with me for some time now are happy. I'm very grateful for all of you. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. First up today, BYD set to supply Tesla with battery cells. Now we've heard this many times before, so is this time for real? It most certainly looks like it as BYD's vice president, Leon Yubo, just said in an interview, we're now good friends with Elon because we're preparing to supply batteries to Tesla very soon. In the interview, Leon was asked about being a rival with Tesla and he said, Tesla is a very successful company no matter what, BYD respects Tesla and we admire them. Some of our domestic new car makers are actually also learning from Tesla and it's an example for us to learn from. So yes, a new supplier means more sales and Tesla continuing to grow. However, this one could be a lot more exciting than just greater supply. To bring everybody up to speed, earlier this year, we heard that BYD was going to supply Tesla with enough batteries for around 204,000 vehicles per year, that mass production of these batteries would start in March this year, that it would be the Blade batteries, and they were expected to hit the market in the second quarter. And in the fall of last year, we heard that Tesla placed an order for 10 gigawatt hours of LFP blade batteries from BYD. It also should be noted that BYD does indeed have factories in California, specifically in Lancaster, which were the first facilities in North America. These two factories are for energy module and electric bus manufacturing. However, at the time of the last check, that BYD factory in California only had a capacity of one gigawatt hour. It is 500 miles from Fremont, and people did say that this could be upgraded to meet Tesla's initial demand. So yes, there's a chance that this deal won't just be for Giga Shanghai vehicles, but could be for American-made vehicles as well. Remember though, around this time, BYD came out and said that nothing was confirmed when it came to working with Tesla. More than that though, this was from last year, but it should get us in the neighborhood if you do the conversion from yuan to USD and from watt hours to kilowatt hours, the cost of a CATL pack would be around $85 per kilowatt hour and the cost for this BYD Blade battery pack would be around $63 per kilowatt hour. So doing some quick math using those figures, you would save $22 per kilowatt hour using these BYD battery packs instead of CATL, which has been one of Tesla's main suppliers at Giga Shanghai. Multiply that then by an average 75 kilowatt hour pack, that would result in an estimated savings per pack of $1,650 using BYD's blade packs. And it's not just financial. Jordan at The Limiting Factor did an excellent video on the BYD blade battery. And the short story is that it could be one of the safest batteries and thus battery packs in the market right now for electric vehicles. This blade form factor is of course much longer, so it helps to dissipate heat more effectively, helping to curb thermal runaway. And from Jordan, using the Model 3 as an example, going from CATL to the BYD blade could also result in the Model 3 getting a bump of around 25 miles of range or a 10% boost. Now his dollar per kilowatt hour figures are slightly different just because the exchange rate has changed from the time of this upload to now. And getting confirmation from a BYD executive makes it seem very likely that all of these rumors that we heard last year that were shot down at the time are going to turn out to be true. So not only is Tesla set to have greater battery supply, but this could result in greater margins for Tesla, more range in the vehicles that this BYD Blade battery ultimately makes it into. So overall, I am super excited about this news. Hopefully it is truly official and we see these in cars sometime this year. Not see them in the cars, but you know what I mean. To be clear, no details were given or confirmed in terms of the size of this deal with BYD. However, if we operate under the rumor assumptions of 10 gigawatt hours, doing the math, that's enough for around 133,000 cars. Moving on, a quick PSA from Elon. He said, in general, I'd recommend against using recirculation as the range advantage is small. This stemming from one user sharing that when recirculation was on in Tesla's, the ambient CO2 concentration in the air spikes to extremely high levels due to some testing that he was doing. So when the recirculation was on, as you can see, the CO2 CO2 levels spiked, and when you turn it off, they would immediately drop back down. So just be aware of that and maybe go without recirculation for now. Now, I don't know what's going on here, but somebody shared this meme to Elon on Twitter and he did reply with some eyes. So who knows what's going on, but 
something to watch. He's also been pointing out some ways that he thinks YouTube could be improved. So take it for what you will. So I've linked up with Charity Stars, the sponsor of today's video, to bring you the chance to win a brand new 2022 Model S Plaid. And for those of us that will probably never spend six figures on a car, here's a chance at owning this spaceship. A lot of you know Charity Stars is a fundraising platform that also helps raise money for charitable causes. Donations this time around will benefit One Tree Planted, a company fighting deforestation and helping the environment by doing exactly what the name would imply. To enter the sweepstakes, just head to charitystars.com slash electrified1500. My coupon code will automatically be applied at checkout. And yes, that's 1500 free entries. The Model S Plaid is arguably one of the best cars ever produced. 396 miles of range in a family sedan with great storage that does zero to 60 in under two seconds. This is a global sweepstakes and taxes and shipping will be included for United States winners. After you choose your donation level, you just enter a brief amount of information and then you're in. So if you're in the mood to support a great cause, support the channel, and get the chance to win a brand new 2022 Model S Plaid, the link will be in the description below. You probably saw Rob cover this last night, Tesla registering a new high resolution radar unit with the FCC. However, I think we need to take a look at this a bit more in depth. Green the Only says this high resolution radar is kind of like LiDAR, only using a radar beam instead of a laser for illuminating stuff ahead. And for all of the times that Elon has publicly commented that LiDAR is dead, radar is a fool's errand, and vision only is the future, he has also said this back in February, only high resolution radar is relevant. October of 2020, Green said reportedly, Tesla has been working on in-house radar sensors for a long time, trying to meet Elon's push for these higher resolution, longer range radars. Big radar vendors have long product cycle times and certainly didn't help either, so there's nothing to buy from them at the moment. So maybe Tesla made it happen. Potentially now they have an in-house radar that is high resolution that they think is good enough to re-implement back into its vehicles. Personally, I would much rather have Tesla change course as it gets new information and admit that it was wrong rather than for some stupid reason letting pride get in the way and having Elon or whoever else saying, no, we're never gonna use radar no matter what new data we get or what new technological advancements we can come up with in the radar space. Now, it's probably a good time to mention nothing is official here. This isn't definitely going into Tesla cars and maybe it's for Optimus. Who really knows? Maybe it turns out to be nothing at all. However, I will say based on the breadcrumbs, it seems likely that this could be for Hardware 4, Tesla's next gen FSD computer that we might see first in the Cybertruck and then later in other vehicles. Many people will ask about retrofits. I have no idea, nobody knows for sure. However, it's not going to render vision totally obsolete. And that's where this tweet comes in. Elon previously has said that hardware three should be about 300% better than a human driver. So maybe hardware four with his new high resolution radar could be the ticket to getting Tesla to a thousand percent safer than the average human driver. And I personally think there's a good chance behind the scenes regulators are pushing Tesla to re-implement radar into all of its vehicles, yes, but definitely into this specific dedicated robotaxi for autonomy. A high resolution radar would presumably help with phantom braking and in low visibility scenarios. And who knows, maybe Tesla is struggling to some degree to find a solution to phantom braking with its vision only system. And yes, I know that bringing back radar would re-implement the input conflict issues where Tesla will have input and data from a radar and from vision and it has to make a decision which to trust in some scenarios. I don't know how they'll solve that. Maybe the radar is more from a redundancy standpoint, but beyond my depth, so we'll just have to wait and see. Once again, nothing confirmed here, but definitely something to watch. This right here is awesome news. By 2024, there will be one standard charging port in the EU and it will be USB-C. So most electronic devices will be required to have this charging standard. And I'm hoping this results in standardization of charging ports in the United States as well. So do you remember when Waymo accused Uber of stealing self-driving technology and then Uber paid a decent sized fine and settled? Well, fast forward to today and now the two are partners committed to forming a deep long-term partnership. So Waymo connecting its autonomous technology to Uber's freight division. 
division. Tesla opened its first store in Inner Mongolia, ramping up efforts in North China. This one's interesting. Peter Rawlinson and RJ Scringe were both compensated around $400 million last year, while both companies are losing to the tune of four to $5 billion per year. Now compare that to Mary Barra and Jim Farley, who were both compensated in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 million last year. Cadillac released a teaser image, if you can call it that, of its new Celestic EV set to come out in 2025 and cost in the six figure range. Here's the picture. Don't forget to check out Charity Stars linked below. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.